is my story time on what actually made me decide to stop trying to go back to the JW cult after I was disfellowship. Um, pretty much what made me understand it was a cult. Um, so up until this point, I had had some things I really didn't agree with. Um, some things that were just behavioral, like we've mentioned, elders, elders, kids, um, certain people get away with things other people don't. And that never sat right with me because obviously and logically that's not God punishing one person and not the other. That is a man picking who their favorite people are and not punishing them. So starting from this video on, I'm going to start telling you guys almost every single thing that I ever witnessed in the cult, um, from the littlest of issues to the very big, serious crimes that were committed. Um, but this is pretty much from the time frame that I got disfellowshipped. I did start going back to meetings um, where no one would talk to me and I had to sit alone, get there a little bit late and leave early. Um, and in this time frame, I was actually diagnosed with ovarian cancer. And I specifically didn't tell anybody because I didn't think it was the cult's business to know things. Um, my sister, who's a Jehovah's Witness, who doesn't speak to me because she was also shunning me, um, my dad told her and she decided to tell everybody. So from that point on, I knew specific people who knew. Not one of them reached out to me. Not one of them reached out to my father who was not disfellowshipped. He had just faded or disassociated himself throughout just being inactive. Um, so they, through their own rules, could have talked to my dad and quite frankly should have been reaching out to my dad to see if he needed help with anything, even if they didn't, I guess, feel comfortable and want to talk to me. Um, but not one of them did. Um, and I remember when that ordeal happened, I was remember thinking to myself, and whether or not you believe in God or Jesus or anything, I'm not getting into religious beliefs. I'm just getting into um, my belief at that time is I remember thinking if Jesus was here right now and I had cancer and I was disfellowshipped in, in that position of being disfellowshipped, I had no doubt in my mind Jesus would come and talk to me and try and help me and love me and do that with my father as well. And that was kind of like an aha moment and it shouldn't take something that serious to be, but you know, being indoctrinated in my whole life, it had to be something big to fully wake me up. And seeing 100% their lack of love through that ordeal um, is pretty much what proved it to me. And I got one text from an elder accidentally Okay. Um, so with that, um, one elder had, out of everybody I knew, thousands of people in Bend, Oregon that were Jehovah's Witnesses, one elder had reached out to me accidentally. My name is Mariah. He texted another Mariah, and um, it was meant for a different Mariah, and he sent me the text. And at the time, I was still very um, low-spirited, so I, I decided to message him back and just let him know I think that was for the wrong person, whereas now... That would not be my response. It would either be ignoring them completely or telling them to fuck off. Um, and he messaged back. He's like, oh, yeah, that was for somebody else. Oh, and also I heard about your situation. Sorry about that. That was his response. Um, another sister who did actually reach out to me, um, and this is the only person who went out of their way to personally message me. Her name was Michelle. Um, very nice lady. Um, she sent me a text and this, I will tell you was probably the biggest thing that made me be like, nope, I'm done. She sent me a text that said, you know, heard about what's happening. I'm so sorry. Um, you know, we love you. I hope you come back so we can help you through this. So the only way you can help me not die is if I go back to the congregation. Other than that, you guys are 100% fine with not caring to help me or make sure I'm okay in any way whatsoever. That right there was the key on what really um, set me over the edge. Um, I had a couple inactive people who reached out to me who were friends with me on Facebook who said something kind, but I don't consider those people Jehovah's Witnesses because they weren't active and they weren't um, really members of the congregations when I was in them. So. Um, 
I don't consider that a part of the congregation. Um, but that was it. No one reached out to me. And um, later, a couple years after all that happened, I ended up finding out a brother who ended up, and I'm going to tell you the story with this brother. Um, his name was Troy. Um, he had been in a lot more trouble than I ever was, but he at this point in time when I was disfellowshipped, he ended up getting promoted to a ministerial servant is what I had heard. And his best friend, Cody, became an elder. And apparently in a full group of people, Troy decided to tell everybody the reason I got cancer is because I'm such a slut and I was probably having a ton of sex. So part two on why